السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Brothers and sisters in Islam in our, today, in our today's session we are going to talk about Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr. And <coughs> may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to pray its night and fast its day. Uh, first of all, what is the meaning of the Qadr itself? The word Qadr and Qadr, uh, which in Arabic uh, they mean decree. Also, Qadr means also majesty. Or high esteem okay so that is also the meaning of the word Qadr in the Arabic language so and always there will be a link between the uh, technical definition and the linguistic meaning there will be always a thread linking the two so Laylatul Qadr or the night of Qadr means the night of decree or the night of majesty and nowadays it is commonly used that the night of power people they got used to this terminology and they call it Laylat al-Qadr, the night of power. And as we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He can choose and single out a certain night and attribute to it a certain merit or virtue. For instance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He chose from among the days, the Friday. So the best day is the Friday. He chose from among the months, Ramadan. He chose from among the nights, Laylat al-Qadr. He chose from among the places, Mecca. Okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has the right to do that. But we cannot do this. We are not allowed to say this day has certain merit or virtue if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say that or His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <clears throat> so nights are the time which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has designated for the attainment of spiritual blessings and power. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has addressed his Prophet sallallahu in the early days of the da'wah when he received the revelation in the cave of Hira and he came to Khadija and he was saying, Rab me, Rab me. And he was in fear, state of fear. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately addressed him, Ya ayyuhal muzzammil, kum layla illa qalila. He addressed him, addressed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi Ya ayyuhal muddathir, qum. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he addressed his Prophet sallallahu Oh, you folded in garments, rise to pray the night except a little, except a little. That, most, that means most of the night he was praying sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because the way to the Akhirah, brothers and sisters, is a very long way. And it is full of temptations, full of tests, full of trials. So you need to have strong and firm faith which will enable you to carry on. So you need to have that faith in Allah which Muslims unfortunately, they lack nowadays. We are over one billion Muslims, but we are weightless. We don't have that strength. People, they ignore us. Why? Because of this. 
we lack the Imam. So it is high time for Muslims to come back to their roots and to strengthen that Iman. And the moment we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant us the power and the strength. And we will go and we will be having the upper hand again, inshallah. Because what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters, he asked from us only two things in Surah Ali Imran. In tasbiru wa tataqu, la yadurrukum kaiduhum shay'a. Two things he wanted. If you are patient and if you are pious and righteous, then don't worry about the rest. I will handle them. That's what Allah said. So it is high time. That's why the spirituality to work hard in our hearts. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked his prophet to stand most of the night. To stand most of the night. He, <clears throat> he went through a lot of tortures. They strangled him, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa they put the placenta and the dirt on his back. This is what he received during the course of the da'wah. But he never gave up. And see how he treated them when he was having the upper hand. That's how he treated them. He said, go, I will not do anything to you today. And whoever enters the house of Abu Sufyan, he is safe and I'm not going to harm him. So what are the things one can do, brothers and sisters, on the night of Qadr, of power? For instance, you need to take a vacation. For the last 10 nights. And dedicate these 10 nights only for worship. So you are free for the ibadah. Do i'tikaf. And i'tikaf literally it means seclusion. So when you seclude yourself from the people. And uh, technically according to the definition of the sharia. It is to sit in the masjid. Okay. You sit in the masjid. Uh, and dedicate yourself to the ibadah. Reading the Quran, praying, etc. And you don't come from the i'tikaf, which is the masjid. That what the place or always place of i'tikaf is the masjid. وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ So people should not approach the woman when they are in state of i'tikaf. And it is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu And the Prophet Sallallahu he practiced this sunnah. And he made i'tikaf in the beginning of the month of Ramadan as well as in the, big, the end of the of the month and his wives as well they did the same thing also reading the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with reflection and pondering upon its ayat one should also work hard to uh, cleanse and to wipe away his sins because Ramadan is a chance for us and you will how, how, how one can know whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his deeds or not the fruit of Ramadan will appear after the month of Ramadan if after the month of Ramadan you carried on doing righteous deeds and good deeds, this is inshallah a sign that Allah accepted your fast. But if you t immediately after day one, on the Eid day you went to square one and you went back to do the bad deeds, that means you didn't gain anything from the month of Ramadan except the hunger and the, and the thirst as mentioned in the hadith. So here the Prophet as in Bukhari and Muslim, he is emphasizing upon this uh, issue. He said, whoever stands in, stands in prayer in Laylatul Qadr, while nourishing his faith with self-evaluation, check yourself. And you are seeking by standing the Laylatul Qadr, Allah's blessings and reward. Expecting reward from Allah will have all of his previous sins forgiven. All your sins that you committed and perpetrated will be washed away and will be forgiven. What is the merit of this night? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in his book, Inna anzannahu fi laylatil qadr. Verily, we have sent this Quran down on the night of al-qadr. And in another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to the same layla, to the same night, Inna anzannahu fi laylatil mubaraka. Inna kunna munziri. So the layla mubaraka is the Laylatul Qadr. That's why the Quran explains each other. So whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that this is the best way of explaining the Quran, if you want to understand. That you explain the Quran with the Quran. Or with the sunnah of the Prophet So Laylatul Qadr, it is the Layla Mubarakah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Verily, verily, we have sent this Quran down on a blessed night. On a blessed night. Verily, we always warn the people. Warn the people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sends messengers and prophets as warners to convey the message. So no one will come on the day of judgment and start saying to Allah, well, I didn't know. No one came to me. No. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in Surah Al-Mulk, 
كلما ألقي فيها فوج سألهم خزنتها ألم يأتكم نذير قالوا بلى so Allah سبحانه وتعالى is just so no one will have an excuse on the day of resurrection no one at all so the angels they rebuke them didn't Allah send warners to you they said yes but we didn't listen to them we didn't listen to them so that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messengers and prophets as warners to the people and this blessed night the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said because in the end salamun hiya hatta matla' al-fajr this uh, night is a blessed night what will happen on that night the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in the authentic narration عدد الملائكة في الأرض كعدد نجوم السماء The number of angels on earth on that night as many as the number of the stars. That's why no shooting star will happen on that night. The shayateen will not be able to go up because the angels are going up and down. So the angels on that night on the earth as many as the number of the stars. That is the best the the, the Laylatul Qadr which is the blessed night. Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu reported that Allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said Ramadan has come to you which is we mentioned in the beginning of the, our series and what is relevant to the Laylatul Qadr is the end of the hadith where he said there in it there is in it in that uh, hadith one night one night that is better than 1000 months 1000 months imagine what if you calculate it, so only one night. So I should not miss it. The whole, if I work hard, as the Prophet ﷺ used, to tight his waist. That means metaphorically working hard. Shadd al mizar That means metaphorically he's working hard for the, in the, during the last 10 nights. And this is the reward that one night is equivalent to 1,000 months. So why should I miss this? Why should I miss this? This is very important. And uh, he who is denied its goodness is truly deprived of goodness. If you are deprived of this goodness of this night, that means you didn't pray that night, or you were not, you were not in, in the masjid that night, then you are a loser. You lost a lot of things. So that's why the last 10 nights, I have to get myself ready, dedicate myself only for ibadah in order not to miss this this night which is Laylat Al-Qadr uh, of course which night uh, nobody knows and there is a secret be behind this there is a wisdom there is a wisdom that's why you find some Muslims they only dedicate themselves and they work hard on the 27th night as if it is 100% 27th so 21st, 23rd tw no they are not there in the masjid for instance but on the 27th you will not find a place for your foot. Right? Muslims, uh, Muslims, the masjids are packed and full. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is a wisdom. He wanted us to dedicate ourselves throughout the month of Ramadan. Allah. So in Bukhari, in Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muslim, in Sahih Muslim, he said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, seek it, seek it this night. On the last ten nights, on the last ten Nine. nights, if one of you is weak, let him not miss at least the last seven nights. The last seven nights. And the knowledge of it, as we said, it is hidden. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said, uh, this is in Bukhari, he said, I was coming to tell you about the time of Laylatul Qadr. He came out and his intention was to inform the Sahaba. What about the Laylatul Qadr? When so and so disputed, see, why we are deprived, why we didn't know now, why we don't know, it's time, because two Muslims, they argued. Two Muslims, they argued. Two Muslims, they disputed. He said, uh, because so and so disputed, the knowledge of this was raised, was raised, taken, and this may be better for you. So seek it on the ninth, seventh, and fifth nights after 20. In the old nights, in other words. Oh, nice. 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th, and 29th. 29th. So you can see here, because two Muslims, they disputed the Prophet. Allah made his Prophet to forget it. 
This means Muslims should not dispute, Muslims should not argue, Muslims should be together. Muslims should not unite upon the truth. Muslims should behave as brotherly. Because if two Muslims see what we, we lost, otherwise it, had, it would have been made known to us. <clears throat> the night of the 27th, which is, this is a Muslim. So that's why it moves. Laylatul Qadr moves during the last 10 nights, the old ones. And there will never be any contradiction between the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because someone might, someone might pose the question and say, in this hadith they say 27th. It coincided. It happened to be on that night on the 27th. But it doesn't mean that it always it will fall on the 27th. Okay? Because through, well, we're going to know the signs of Laylatul Qadr. The signs of Laylatul Qadr. The... Uh, which the Prophet sallallahu uh, uh, mentioned, uh, we are going to mention them. He said, on the morning of the following Layl Qadr, the sun rises without rays. The sun rises without rays. Normally, the sun, normally the sun in the morning when it rises, there will be rays. But that night, the night before, the second day, when you can look to the sun and you will find no rays around it, no rays. As if it is just setting. So we conclude that the previous night was the night of the Qadr. This is one sign. The second sign, it is a moderate night. It's neither cool nor hot. Third, no shooting stars. Shuhub, no shooting stars. And uh, we conclude, inshallah, with the hadith of the Prophet, sallam, the dua, which he taught to Aisha. Allahumma innaka afoon. This is what we should repeat through the, the, the night of the Qadr, inshallah, or the last ten nights. May Allah accept our deeds and your deeds, inshallah, and help us, inshallah, not to miss Laylatul Qadr. And now, inshallah, we open the floor for questions that are either related to the topic or any other topic, inshallah. So don't feel hesitant to ask any question. Bismillah uh, rahim uh, Sheikh Salam, please tell me, uh, can a tikaf be done in any masjid or only in our holy, uh, three holy masjids? Uh, okay, this is a good question because it is a controversial issue all the time. Uh, first of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wa antum fil -masajid. So he said, al masajid. So here, this word al masajid is a generic term. Am. It's general. It can be applied to any masjid. It can be applied to any masjid. But there is a hadith, which is authentic hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, there is no i'tikaf except in the three mosques. لا اعتكاف إلا في المساجد ثلاثة. So what does it mean? The scholar, they say the hadith is, is correct. And there will never be contradiction between Quran and hadith. Put this in mind. So what does it mean? It means, the scholar, they say, yes, the i'tikaf in the three masjids is the best. And the reward will be the highest reward you will achieve. But this does not negate or does not mean that it's not permissible to perform itikaf in other masjids. Though, the best thing that when you want to make itikaf, you choose a masjid which is we call masjid jami'. That a masjid where the jum'ah will be conducted. The reason, the scholars, they say, why masjid, masjid jami'? Why? in order that you will not go and leave the masjid, okay, to pray Jum'ah. So the Jum'ah is in the same masjid. So when you intend to make itikaf, look for a masjid that Jum'ah is conducted in it. So that you will not be, uh, you will not feel that the necessity will not be compelled to remove, leave the masjid and pray, go to pray the Jum'ah in another masjid. That's it. So this is something recommended and something uh, mustahab, inshallah. Yes. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Dear Sheikh, uh, is it uh, better for a Muslim woman, a Muslim woman uh, to pray in the masjid or uh, at home, at home. Uh, during Ramadan? Yeah. Okay. Uh, of course, the, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ in general, he said that the best place for a woman, the best place for a woman is her home, her house. Okay? That's the best place, no doubt. But... Let's say that if she prays at home, she will not have khushu'. 
She will not have homage. She will not have concentration in her salah. Okay? Can she go and pray in the masjid? Yes, she can. Because why the Prophet ﷺ said she can pray at home? Because that's the best place for her. But if at home she cannot pray, the children will make her, drive her nut and make her crazy and she will not be able to concentrate, then it is better to go to the masjid and you should not stop her from going to the masjid. Uh, any more questions? Yes. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, in some places, especially where I come from, uh, some people have some superstitions and uh, misconceptions about the Laylatul Qadr. Uh, for example, some people say if I sleep this night and uh, I have a dream of getting money or uh, marrying a specific woman, that will happen for certain. Uh, what's your opinion about these misconceptions mm. and superstitions? Yeah, these are fairy tales. These are fairy tales, people they think, and people they also say that we see the Khidr on the night of Qadr. And if you see the Khidr, and you can ask him whatever you like. And of course, by the way, the Khidr had already died and passed away. And the Khidr is one of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And had the Khidr been alive, he would have come and give the bay'ah and the bridge to the Prophet sallallahu And Hafiz ibn Hajar Haskalani, he refuted this in his book. So Khidr died. Okay, so now, uh, now the, uh, the issue is that uh, these uh, superstitions or... Uh, superstitious beliefs we have to get rid and the only way to get rid of this is by learning the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu may allah accept our deeds and yours and may allah increase our knowledge in his deen amin amin assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh